So this is an SE120 from EK, and this is an XR7 360 from Corsair. And we could all agree that under normal conditions, there's no way that this 120 is going to outperform this 360. It's pretty obvious. When it comes to radiator performance, surface area is literally the key to cooler temperatures. Uh, and this can be accomplished a few ways. One is just simply buying a 360 over a 120 where you just physically have more real estate. Or you can pick up a radiator with a higher FPI or fins per inch. And that essentially just means that a higher fin density on the radiator, which gives you more surface area, which again is the, the key to uh, better performance. As long as you have a fan that has the static pressure, um, you, you gotta have a fan good enough to be able to push air through that tighter fin array. You can also get a thicker radiator, but well, there's always a but. However, a thicker radiator doesn't always translate into better performance. For example, if this was a Thick Boy 120, it would still perform worse than a thin 360, even though this thick, if you can imagine this is a thick 120, is essentially a thin 360 cut into three pieces and stacked together. The same thing happens that would happen if you basically stacked radiators. As air moves past the backside of the Thick Boy radiator, uh, the air is going to be warmer in comparison to the fluid and therefore lose a little bit of cooling efficiency. So you do not, you know, get the same performance, but that's all well and good. These are all things we can't change. So uh, this 120 millimeter radiator is a, a 22 FPI radiator with a, a thickness of about 28 millimeters. Well, this um, XR7 is about 13 FPI and has a thickness of 54. So what can we do? Well, I was wondering, is it possible, stick with me here, is it possible to push enough air through this 120 millimeter radiator that we can essentially make it outperform a 360? I don't know, but I do want to try it and that's what we're going to set out to accomplish today one way or another. Um, now it could work, but it also might fail because of a little thing called heat, air heat transfer coefficient velocity, but just, we're not going to worry about that now. We're just gonna give it a shot. So knowing that, we're going to essentially kneecap the 360 a little bit by running it like somebody would if they were going for the ultimate silent PC build. And this means running this, these A12 X25 fans at 1200 RPMs, which is the RPM that this fan does run when you get the ultra low noise version. Now, as for the 120, we're gonna, we're gonna take a bit of the opposite approach. Now, I don't have a blowy Matron, which I kind of wish I did, but I don't have one, but, I made something and I think it'll do the same thing. This is an Emax RS2205 2600 kV red bottom motor. We'll be running this motor at 12 volts, meaning that unloaded, this motor could spin at an astonishing 31,200 RPM. Now, obviously, as soon as we put a fan on it, that added load to the motor is going to lower those RPM, but that's still pretty fast. And speaking of fans, today we're not gonna be running anything that I cooked up. We're going to be, uh, running something a little bit more purpose-built. This is a five inch T5045 tri-blade that I scavenged off my old race quad. Uh, paper hands to my race quad. It's, it's literally lost almost all of its pieces now, which is a bummer because I really did like flying it. Now the problem, the problem with these two items is they were never, never intended to run inside of a PC setup. So finding a fan body to house them, it was, uh, well, something that's not possible, but I was able to make something and 3D print it out, which is, which is awesome. And here it is. This is a custom made fan shroud for a mini quad or five inch tri-blade mini quad prop. Now, the only thing about it is that a normal fan, 120 millimeter fan is, um, the actual fan disc diameter is like 110, 111 millimeters where this five inch prop is 127 millimeters. So it is actually larger than the radiator. So I had to make the fan shroud a little different than normal, as in I added these little steps on the inside to keep hopefully any air from wanting to go around the outside of the radiator to try to get most of it to go through the fin stack as possible. And I, I think it'll work pretty good. I don't have any fears really of the, the, the air not actually passing through the radiator. What I do have fears of is that, well, this, this racing quad motor and this tri-blade prop, uh, they produce quite a bit of force given that they're designed to, you know, make a racing quad flip around and do all kinds of crazy tricks and stuff in the air while moving at high rates of speed. Well, this is essentially just PLA. So will it hold up? I don't know. I tried to make it pretty girthy um, and the Prusa did a good job of making a nice clean print, but we're not gonna know until we 
essentially get it all set up and just run it up and see what it does. So that's what we're gonna do. I already have ran this setup here. So this 360 with these A12X25s ran at the ultra low noise RPM setting of 1200. Have already ran, so this is the numbers that we're trying to beat. And now we're going to mount up this motor, do some soldering and uh, see if she holds together, which should be fun. Now I'm gonna use obviously my my RC transmitter so I can go ahead and get out of the room when we spin it up full speed because this could, it could grenade itself if it, if it pulls itself off. But well, you know what, it'll be fun. Let's just give it a shot. <laughs> so sketchiness uh, level is getting pretty high. So I think we're good. Uh, clearance, we look like we're all set to go. I got everything wired. Uh, I got an energy meter here. So what I've done is I've run this fan just on its own power supply. So the pumps obviously run in full speed like it was in the last test, but the fan is on its own power supply. Just so we can see um, how much power just this fan itself pulls because it'll be a nice comparison to uh, what a normal system does. So if we do beat the 360, um, if, if, we'll know how much energy it takes just to run the fan when compared to like a normal mid to low range system. We'll say, um, what does that normally pull? like? Five, 600 watts. This is a 600 watt power supply, so it should be able to power that, hopefully. So we'll keep an eye on that. I also got a target set up uh, for this laser to measure RPM, and it should be exciting. So uh, first thing we need to do is stability test of just the fan to make sure we're not gonna... So let's, uh, let's run it up, make sure everything stays put, and go from there. Okay, so you should be able to see, yeah, you can see the energy meter. Uh, Controllers on and armed, throttles back, fans now on. I'm gonna vacate the room real quick. So we're pulling just seven watts right now, 7.6. We're gonna slowly ease the throttle up, make sure we stay stable here. Oh, we're walking. Ooh. Okay, we're gonna need to fasten her down. Okay, I think we are secure. So we're gonna give this another shot. Safety glasses on, controller on, throttle down, power on. Alrighty, coming up. About half throttle, sitting about 64 watts. Move up to full throttle here. There we go, full throttle. Pull about 200 watts. So loud. No, 280 watts. All right, throttle down. Let's check the temps. Doesn't seem to be too bad. So we're gonna throttle it up one more time. Um, I set a bunch of meters next to it. So I got my RPM meter, my DB meter. You got the power meter all behind it so we can kind of see what's going on. Uh, also, it's a little too sketchy to get it close. So right now we're sitting at 5,000 RPMs, 70 dB, uh, and we're just high enough on the throttle curve to keep it from stalling. So we'll move up and see kind of where everything maxes out here. 8,000 RPM, 82 decibels. We're gonna bring it all the way up to full throttle. Twenty thousand RPM. Twenty thousand RPM and ninety-nine decibel. I think it's maxing out my decimal meter. So two hundred and eighty watts, twenty thousand RPM, and uh, basically a hundred decibels. Jesus. Make sure that's off. And wow, that is <laughs> that's probably the most ridiculous thing that I've done in quite some time. But hey, it works. Um, it's very loud. It's very fast but it does the job of being a stand-in blow emitron. And now it's time, it's time to run the, the, the benchmark. So I gotta run I to 64 for 45 minutes. That means I gotta listen to that nonsense for 45 minutes. Uh, hopefully it makes the whole time. I mean, I, I wasn't feeling it overheat. If you guys remember the, the old Yeet fan video when I had this motor covered, uh, we overheated, but essentially I think it'll be all right since it's, it's kind of set up to run like that. Not. Probably not full power stationary for that long, but you never know until you try. So I'm gonna try to run this for 45 minutes, not lose my mind, and then we're gonna come back and see if we beat this score, 
that was set by the A12X25. Wish me luck. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, the first good news. This actually survived a full 45 minutes of continuous full throttle uh, stress testing. I was a little on the fence if it was gonna do that and I actually checked the RPM at the end. It was still at a solid 20,000 RPMs and blowing a literal hurricane of air across the back of my wall here. But did it beat the 360? Well, I, yeah, I guess it did by 0.1 degrees, which is literally the, I mean, that's so close. That's, that's definitely within the margin of error. So it did it now, maybe tied, but keep in mind uh, that we uh, kneecapped the 360 and put the fans at an ultra low noise setting of 1200 RPM. So if you, I guess if you bought the A12X25s for a 360 that were the ultra low noise version, this would perform just as well as that. So I guess that's a win. But let's remember that this setup at full bore was 100 decibels. It was ear bleeding. <laughs> Definitely prolonged exposure to that, that noise level is very detriment, detrimental to your hearing. So not advised, I had to leave the room away for it to finish before coming back in and shutting her down. Uh, but it did make it. The, I mean, in the end though, the, the motor hub was still warm. It was uh, pretty toasty. Even this 24 pin cable was a little, a little warm. Uh, so efficiency wise, no, nah. <laughs> this was just for fun, obviously. But I mean, even the funniest thing about it, the whole thing. So I turned this back on. So this is the 7700K back up and running on the Ida 64 stress test at 4.9 gigahertz. So just run the stress test again, obviously fans off, but this is the system. 165 watts is currently pulling while running this overclocked chip on Ida 64. And do you guys remember what this was? Just the fan alone on its own power supply by itself was like 280 watts. So that's insane. But you know what? If you guys, if you have uh, an RS2205 red bottom motor and you wanna do this because why not? It's, it's hilarious, it's very fun. Make sure you uh, wear your eye protection, leave the room or wear hearing protection. Uh, don't stick your finger in the blade, all that good stuff. I will put this on my Thingiverse account so you can print out this motor hub and do whatever you want with it. So check my Thingiverse account. Uh, if you have another great idea for a future video, leave it down below because of course I'll try literally anything. Make sure to subscribe and we'll see you next time.